that on this okay. interview. But I had I, I had a retirement party uh -huh. uh, last uh, fall. Oh yes. And as my response, so to speak, I told some of my story, and it's recorded. Good. So you can you can take a look All at that. Right, it's, I will. it's very different from your story of how you got here. Interesting. Uh, but I certainly benefited enormously from from this place and the people and people like Bert Kaplan oh. and John Castle, who inspired me. I took his course with you in the same year you did, and I didn't know what epidemiology was. Right. And I was just blown away. This was the most inspiring thing I'd heard in my whole academic. And how did he do it with little? Three by five cards. Well, in my recollection was he actually read from the the, the handout or the he did? chapter. That was my recollection. Now, you know, he gave a course uh, eight or so lectures, and it's possible he read some, and those are the ones I'm remembering, and others came from the three by five cards. Yeah. But he was, Bert said he spoke like someone with a Talmudic education. Yes. That would be. And did he? Yeah. Yeah. He did, didn't he? In yeah. South Africa? He did. He did. I mean, I mean, I don't know what a Talmudic education is compared to what Bert knows, but right. but uh, Bert first attended the seminars that John Castle gave because Bert was a student oh, in right. sociology. That's right. And then he came and attended yeah. some of the seminars, and that was his first response. I was stunned. I think we were all stunned by this Titan. That's the only term I can use about him uh, because he had this breadth and he was so unassuming. Mm -hmm. And yet, the depth of his knowledge, wow. Yeah, Tyroler was, was like that too. Yes, I mean, uh, Tyroler was yeah. like that in a different way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely in a different way. Very committed to epidemiology too. Mm -hmm. And very um, aware of what he could contribute. The respect of these two men for each other, I think, was ginormous. And I didn't sense at all there was any stepping on each other's toes. Mm -hmm. And they shared this big office, and my sense was that there was this repertoire, almost a dance of the two titans, that we didn't know about, that was going on behind the scenes to train all of us. I, I don't know how they did it. It would have been interesting to be in their sessions with the two of them talking about how they wanted to train us. Because Castle wanted social science biology and statistics, remember, and epidemiology. He demanded us to have those tracks. I think Al did too. And so somehow they formulated this idea of what epidemiology should be and were able to accelerate and move forward so many legacies like ourselves. I can't imagine has anyone looked at the number of students who were trained under these two titans? Hmm. Wouldn't it be interesting to see this? So I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the author's name. Have you heard of the book Anthropology and Epidemiology? Yes, but I haven't read it. I it, should have. <laughs> you, uh, there are several chapters there, particularly okay. I think it's chapter three, okay. that, you will, uh, that I will try to give you a copy of okay. if I remember wrong. I'll <coughs> email you one. Um, it's about the epidemiology department here. And it talks about John Castle's work in Falela, right. and it talks about people like Bird and Ralph Patrick, and, and bringing here and what went on, and it's it's it has some of the references mm -hmm. and things like that for some of the, what you've been talking about. I mean, it's this was a hotbed of anthropology and epidemiology. Yes, yeah, it was, <laughs> and I was lucky enough. You were lucky enough to be there, here at the time when the leading figures could provide us the infrastructure and the base that I still carry in many different ways. I mean, I've taken a lot of other, we've all taken a lot of other courses, uh, particularly in statistics, but we, we've all kept that germ of the idea going and I think effused it to our students. I have 120 students I've trained. I looked on my Vita. Um, Doctoral? For a, you mean Doctoral and Master's? Doctoral and Master's, yeah. I looked on it for a T32 or writing. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to do, right? Yeah, that's what you have to do. <laughs> and I was struck by how many of my students are not American, they're Haitian, they're Lebanese, they're Israeli, um, because of the double click that I've had on culture change and health. So I am um, just absolutely pleased that I could share it with them and I feel that they are the legacy 
that we could give. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. It's just, and and I think we have, we ha share this era, um, and I think a reunion of us would bring out some vignettes. Well, more and we'll than record what we have, it, right? right? We'll right. record this we, reunion. We, we must record it with everybody there, and find out what they did and and what their children did. I mean. I've got a son who's doing research internationally, with, who's an epidemiologist, environmental scientist. Really? That's the one who's here. He's here today visiting with me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting and him. And he uh, talked with us at dinner about what he's doing. And again, he talks about being a great grandchild of someone here in Washington, environment, somebody who led the water sanitation field. And, and and I don't know who it is, but he can tell you the name. So he sees the legacy out of UNC, even though he went to Duke as an undergrad. <laughs> and where did he get his graduate training? Emory. Oh, I see. That's uh -huh. where he trained with with David Kleinbaum. With David Kleinbaum. Right. Well, this has really been wonderful. I, uh, well, I appreciate. I, I didn't even have an inkling. I mean, I had an inkling, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have an idea of the extensive experience that you could be able to remember. You'd be able to remember. Uh, it's it, it's it, it was. Terrific, and for a woman research, a young woman, very young woman, <laughs> at the time, it was an incredible experience. A seriously respectful, challenging, supportive experience, and 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 one that threaded careers of so many of us. Many of us went on to NIH to the intramural program, you know, directly. Aaron Blair, Debbie Wynn, a whole bunch of us went straight to NIH to the intramural program and had a blast there. Susie Haynes, you remember Susie Haynes? Oh, I do yeah, remember yeah. So yeah. Susie was there too. Uh, and I'm not naming, I, I can't remember the Yeah, well, we should bring, I should bring you a list of, right. of the names. Right. But, um, well, this has been really great, and I look forward to recording that reunion that oh. someone is going to organize. I hope you've had a brilliant career. I was looking through your CV, okay. and I just, I mean, I, I knew from the award that we received, I mean, you, okay. you and I received awards a couple of years ago, or a year ago. This no, it was September? This last September, yeah. Congratulations uh, to well, you and Abe Lively and felt. But congratulations to you. And I was just, you know, I've, I'm, just, I'm just so impressed with what you've been able to do. It's, well, likewise. Uh, tremendous. And it was so funny when we got up there, remember, I got up and started talking about Castle, and, and then you got up and started talking. It was de novo, spontaneous <laughs> synergy. <laughs> the poor audience, <laughs> all they heard was UNC. Well, that was, it was good. good. It's really good. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Okay. okay. Well, well thanks. thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. You say goodbye My to pleasure. the camera. Bye. And, uh, we'll, I'll close okay. it off. Yeah, absolutely. So this you have your seminar this afternoon, this afternoon, and I will be there to record that. Oh, thank you very much. No, I mean, thank it's, you. It's up to this you. Is, you know, it's, 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 uh, I've got a slide that starts with um, the, a little bit about Al and then my doctoral mentors, but not anything close to what we talked about just now, because these questions are very good. They really peculiar my memories. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't think I had these kinds of memories until I looked at them and went, oh, remember that? Oh, remember that? So, and maybe you can get, have you gotten Sherman on this? Yeah, Sherman was one of the first interviews. Um, in, not with this, this is before we had the outline. Oh, okay. And Bill Jenkins interviewed him. Oh, that's right. And that's right. it was, that. um, it was only a half hour. Oh. Because that's all Shame. we had. Well, I, I know, but uh, then he came to my class, which I also recorded. Oh, good. So I have more. I just have to figure out how to extricate it from the class because the FERPA protections, like, oh, okay. unless students are agreeable to it. But I'm hoping that they'll eventually say yes, okay. Absolutely. Because uh, he told the, the John Henryism story in the yes. class. Yes. Um, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. But Sherman's story of how he came to epidemiology. You mentioned that you didn't know what epidemiology was when you came here and Bert told you about it. Sherman got a call asking him to apply for a faculty position here. Right. And he didn't know what epidemiology was. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the call from? Uh, Ralph Patrick. Oh, now that makes sense, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> well, Ralph John Castle had initiated, you know, yeah, yeah. there was a search committee and John Castle was encouraging them. I, I forget who it was who proposed Sherman's name. Um, I think it was a graduate. Oh, I think Cecil Sloan was involved in that, su in that suggestion, I'm actually. I'm not surprised. Uh, there was a graduate of the school, or a former student in the school, I don't know if he graduated, in Durham, 
who had been knew Sherman from South Carolina. And, oh, interesting. And who would that have been? I, I, I know I have his name somewhere, oh, okay. but I don't have okay. it here. He wasn't an Epi student. He was okay. an Enver student. Oh, okay. If I remember correctly, and uh, Cecil happened to talk to him and said, yeah. you know, we're looking to recruit African American faculty or black right. faculty is probably what was said. And he said, well, you know, you might think about Sherman James, who's getting his PhD in psychology at Washington University. There you go. And that led to this call from Ralph Patrick, and Sherman just, I, I won't spoil right. the telling of it, because okay. Sherman is a masterful storyteller, as you he know. He is, yes. And so you can hear it from him, I, I, but it's I'll hilarious. Have to, I will definitely double click on that one. You have so many great um, opportunities to create the legacies from different eras here. Um, and I only imagine that those who, like Sherman, started from the faculty level. I, I would love to have known what Barbara Hulka would have said. Well, I have an interview with Barbara Hulka also. You do? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm going yeah, to have to get on this. It would take this. you a lot of time. I know, that's the thing. I read, I listened to all of Burt's. Uh-huh. I've listened to all of one other person, I can't remember who it was, but... It was Michelle Abraham. Yes, I got one of him. yeah, yeah, I listened to him. Because he has an unusual background also. Mm -hmm. So who had a, what was the usual Who had a normal background? <laughs> <laughs> who did here? How did they, and how did they find that normal person? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's super. Well,